Law, Five Minutes with Eric, EPGD Attorneys at Law. So I was just talking about how if you are gonna put money into a property, real estate, and you wanna have something to show for it, first of all, maybe you should put it in your name or maybe you should have some sort of arrangement with the people who are living there that you're paying for everything or maybe you should have an estate plan. So let's tell the whole story. So a lady decides to buy a house for her parents and puts the house in the name of the parents. Now her parents are living there, they're enjoying it, they're living out their remaining years and she's paying for everything. She's paying all the mortgage, she's paying for renovations, she's doing all the landscaping, she's doing everything, all the upkeep, she's paying for taxes, she's paying for insurance. And so then later on, towards the end of her parents' life, they decide to retitle the house into the name of one of the sisters. Now in this story, there's five sisters. And so this is the sister that she likes the most. And she's like, hey sister, I paid for this whole house for mom and dad and they've been living there you know, in the house I paid for, now I'd like the house to be in your name. And so what ends up happening in real life is the sister then moves in, they retitle the property using a quick claim deed, and that just transfers the ownership of the property from the parents to the sister. And then the sister gets sick and she passes away before they have a chance to transfer the property again or to do any other sort of planning. And so when the sister passes away, now we're gonna have to take the house and go through probate. Now let's talk about that for a second. Houses, in particular real estate, either has to go through the probate process, which is a court with judges and clerks and lawyers, and it's expensive and it takes a long time, and or we can have the house pass outside of probate. Now the most common ways to do that are to have the house owned by a company, such as an LLC or a corporation, or to have the house owned by a trust in the name of a trust. And so the trust can have instructions such as, you know, let me kind of just say, I'll, I'll come back to the trust. So the trust can say it goes to whoever and therefore we don't need to go to court. So you can skip the whole court process. So instead of a long court process, you end up with a very short process of pr potentially transferring the property out of the trust. So back to what happened in real life. So what happened in real life, sister dies and she is intestate. What that means is she doesn't have a will. So there's no, uh, there's no any provision to say, if I die, I want my house to go to my good sister that actually paid for it. That would have been really nice, but she didn't do that. So instead it's the law of intestacy and every state has a slightly different law. We inherited it from the English and it basically said intestate means in Latin dying without a will or without a will. So the lady dies without a will or she dies intestate. So we go and we literally look at the family tree. So question number one, are you married? No. Question number two, do you have kids? No. Question number three, do you have any like predeceased children or grandchildren? And no, it's kind of a corollary of number two. Question number four is, um, do you, are your parents still alive? And in this case, remember I already told you the parents passed away. So then question number five is, do you have any siblings? And in this case, yes. She had four remaining sisters, including the one sister that paid for everything. So now this house has to go through the probate process. We're gonna get judges and courts and everything. We don't have a will, so we gotta use the law of intestacy. And at the end of the story, the four sisters are gonna inherit the house together. There's literally gonna be a deed from the judge with four names on it. And they're gonna have an equal one quarter interest in the property. And the one lady says, well, wait a minute, that's not fair, I paid for everything. Now in a really nice family where everybody's getting along, the three other sisters would have been like, you know, you paid for everything, you're so nice, I am going to waive my interest in the estate and therefore it's gonna act as though I don't exist and it'll go just straight to the sister that it belongs to. Well, that's not what happened here. One sister's gonna do that, the other sister we're not sure and the last sister is like, ha 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 ha, my payday, I just inherited half of a house or a quarter of a house or, or a third of a house depending on how many people back out. And so the moral of the story, if, if I've said it so many times, is proper planning. You can avoid all of these problems. Instead, there could be family litigation. It could take years and drag out. So if you guys have a situation like this, please leave a comment. Please ask for a free consultation. I'm happy to talk with you.